Yo, what is up everyone? Back here with another video and this video is going to be a bit of a different one. So today I wanted to talk to you guys more so about planning a trip, kind of going through the steps of doing that. Uh, less so focus around the team building or like that stuff aspect. That's going to be a separate video, but more so how you can do it because I've had a lot of people ask me like, how do you sign up for a regional? How do you do this thing? You know, that stuff. So I'm going to kind of be going through all of it with you guys, uh, more so the planning aspect of things, what you need to do before you go to regional and a checklist that I think you should personally have before you go. So here's always the biggest things that I think are important when it comes to um, regionals. First off, you have to know your regional location, right? So obviously for me, my plan is to go to Salt Lake regionals, right? So we're going to plan out my trip over there, right? Like, or we're going to plan out my trip over there, right? I'm going obviously, but what I mean more so about that is like, you know, obviously like, uh, I'm probably going to, uh, <laughs> like, I'm not going to do it live and like do all the payment, and everything on recording, but like, I'll basically show you like how I would plan out the trip. Right. So first off, we'd have to look at the dates right now. Typically, when you're planning for the dates, it depends where you're coming from. For me, I'm leaving from New York. So you'll see prices are pretty high. Um, one thing that you can always do, especially when you, like, you look at the flights, you can always track uh, the price graph, right? So you'll see that typically um, right now it's kind of at its peak. Uh, it's looking like it's going to be dropping down uh, in this area. But the thing is, is that this is the price relative to what it is at the moment. So if you look... Right at a more kind of closer flight, let's say we were leaving sooner to Salt Lake City, you'll see that there are cheaper flights, right? Like even let's say we were to leave for Salt Lake at some point, like in the next like couple weeks, right? Um, it's cheaper flights. Now, one thing that might be worth considering too is that when you're coming into regionals, if you can get an extra day off, specifically coming in on the Friday, um, like, or not on the Friday, but like the day before, if you can like come in extra day earlier and like the cost kind of balance out, you can always do something like that too. Unfortunately for something like this, obviously it's a little bit trickier, right? Because, um, you have the issue of like having to balance out, you know, the flights. Um, but as we get closer to the dates, there should be a like better, um, there should be a better like kind of idea of like where the flights are going to be at price wise, you know? Um, but this is just to obviously give you an idea. Like this is kind of the typical uh, flights. You kind of need to find that perfect time where like um, where, you know, you'll get the um, you, you will kind of want that sweet spot in between when it's not too expensive, but also like you don't want to wait too long to then where it go just jumps back up. You need to find like that right time to pick up the tickets. Typically, I feel like for a trip like this, something in the 300 range would be really reasonable based, based off the price graph, right? So if I can get like a $300 flight, that would be ideal for a place like this, right? Now, going over to ways that you can uh, like kind of do stuff, you can room with other players. Obviously with COVID, that kind of depends on your comfort level. Um, the one thing that typically you could do is you could just kind of take the regional location, you know, pop that into a Google map even, right? Okay. General idea. We'll take it on Google maps. We'll take a look at where it is. Okay. So if we look, it is literally pretty much in the middle of Salt Lake city, right? So it kind of gives you a decent idea. It's actually really close to the airport, which is super convenient. So likely what you're going to do is you're going to want to place near the convention center or near the airport or like kind of in the middle somewhere, right? Depending on what's more reasonable. Now, if we look over here, right? And we go over to Airbnb, you'd be like here, right? Boom. You tell them where you're going. Now you can find a bunch of prices. Now, the reason why I suggest Airbnb over uh, hotels is hotels are incredibly expensive. If you look here, Salt Lake City prices are really cheap. So if you're reserving early, you can get like really good places, especially if you're splitting with people per night. It's super nice, right? Like you can, you can definitely find like good deals on places, you know, um, I would definitely recommend Airbnb mostly because I feel like it, um, it kind of works out well. I mean, obviously the more expensive ones, you only do a figure more comfortable, but if, if you're like Working on a budget, you can definitely see what you're doing at that time, right? Um, as well, too, obviously, you want to, like, add your dates, right? So, for us, it would be 18th to 20th, right? Search that. And here, you know, you'll see that, like, right now, the prices are a little high in advance. But as you get closer, there might be some some stuff that frees up. You know, obviously, some hotels in the area might be cheaper. That's something you have to look in as well. Um, building up benefits and having a way to kind of... Uh, have that stuff is going to be really nice. You'll see that there is a bit of low av availability, mostly because there's probably people already booking for this stuff. But yeah, that's uh, that's mostly the stuff you kind of want to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the actual planning aspect of the regional. As I mentioned, like there's a lot more that goes into this. Like 
Um, specifically, there's another thing I wanted to talk about, which kind of is more so related to the, uh, not so much showdown aspect of things, but pretty much when you're coming into a region, I'm actually going to take out my switch for this. Um, obviously you guys are going to see the gameplay screen here, right? What you're going to need to do when you get to the actual regional is you're going to need to pretty much look at your Pokemon and you're going to need to write down the specific stats. So if you played in any of the players cups in recent formats, you're going to be handed a team sheet. You can print these out beforehand, the regional, or like before the regional or like, um, you know, uh, I guess at the regional, you can just kind of use the papers that they give you. You're going to need to write down the, um, stats, like the exact stats, the numbers, you're going to need to write down the ability. You're going to need to write down whether it's GMAX or not GMAX. You're going to need to write down the moves. And then you're going to need to write down... Uh, that, that's like pretty much it. That's all you need to write down, right? Um, nickname 2, I think they have a nickname thing that you write down. It doesn't really matter because it's not shown on broadcast. But like... Uh, so the funny story, I think I'm part of the reason why that nickname thing was added. Um, I did a nickname on one of my Pokemon. And that Pokemon got banned because of its nickname. I named it after a song, but, like, it's a really cursed story. Um, and I was like, well, why don't you guys have a nickname option so you guys can verify before the regional starts? And then they're like, oh, that's a good idea. We're going to put in. And then, of course, in Sword and Shield, nicknames got removed anyways. So then, you know, it, it didn't really uh, work out, right? Um, but, yeah, no. I, I mean, obviously, like, don't have, like, a crazy inappropriate nickname, right? There's something they wouldn't want uh, because that would be bad. Then you'll probably get the Pokemon removed anyways. So just be careful with that. Another thing too, when it comes to team sheet checks, um, do not mess up any stats. Uh, it is a very big deal if you mess up stats. A couple of other mistakes I've seen um, that you can do is like even a misspelling of the move. Make sure you're using clear writing. Also make sure that um, you check every single thing, stat point over and over again. It doesn't even matter if it's something like a Metagross um, having a different special attack, even though the special attack doesn't matter on the Metagross, they will still pe uh, penalize you for that, right? And you can still lose the Pokemon. So, um, do not slack whatsoever. Double check your stats, everything, make sure that it's all correct and make sure that you have a proper team sheet, right? Um, you can definitely miss stuff if you're not careful. So definitely make sure to, to uh, be careful with that and not, um, kind of mess it up. They also ask you for items too, I should say, um, just so you guys know. So, um, going back to the, uh, screen, you know, um, so looking over here, right, obviously you're going to need the stats for your Pokemon. Uh, when you're getting your Pokemon, what I will say is, um, I wouldn't recommend using, uh, jetting bots because that is a great way to get your Pokemon removed immediately. Um, obviously it's a bit taboo, uh, cause they, it, I mean, obviously it's pretty implied, right? You should not be using, uh, jetting bots, uh, to where the TOs are going to notice and kind of remove it, you know, like remove your Pokemon. Um, so that's like a really big thing, uh, as well. Right. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of the actual stuff when it comes to setting up for the regionals. And what I would say is the best form of practice before these regionals, if you want like practice, stuff like that, uh, I'm going to give you guys a couple of things to keep an eye out for. So victory road hosts a bunch of online tournaments. Those are super helpful. Um, those can give you a lot of ways to practice. There's a Hatterene series tournament coming up. If you are non-binary or, um, identify as a woman, you know, you can obviously, uh, participate in this tournament. This is a great, uh, way to get some practice in a pretty safe space, right? Also too, there's going to be a victory road event that they had hinted at, um, soonish. I'm going to see if I can find the tweet, um, save the date, February 26 to 27. There you go. So they specifically brought up a, um, you know, a date that's worth noting. So that's also very important. Come over here. Desafio Latam hosts a bunch of tournaments. They are doing a VGC Challenge League now, which is like a team league, right? Where pretty much you can sign up with your team. So that's pretty cool. Um, stuff you can definitely do to kind of, uh, you know, make some money there. If you have some friends you want to play with and challenge yourself with, could definitely be cool. And uh, yeah. And then a Tournamax Cup is another tournament. The last tournament is this weekend. So a little bit last second notice. That being said, it is uh, a tournament that you can play with friends as well. I think the minimum is five players, so this one's a little bit easier to get into. Uh, they have a last-second qualifier. That being said, uh, you know, obviously you have, like, a couple of options there. Next up, um, Orpo Team. They have another tournament coming up as well. Uh, this is coming up on Sunday the 13th. Uh, this is a good online Swiss, uh, like, tournament if you're kind of looking for something that's less time-consuming, if you're, like... A bit busier like during the week or like you can't necessarily take a whole saturday to play pokemon the rounds happen every two days right so you'll play one swiss round every two days basically so it kind of works out well for that 
then uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, that's that's literally the main thing uh, I wanted to go over. I wanted to highlight some tournaments. I'll have links to all three of these in the description of the thing. Um, today is the day I leave for um, Toronto, so I will be there. These videos will already be slated to upload, so you guys can be expecting videos pretty much every day um, for the next week. Uh, so we should have a video up every day. Um, there might be like one or two days where there's like a gap in between, but for the most part, you guys should get daily uploads. If you guys would like more videos like this, specifically talking about the team preparation for regional, maybe going into more depth, how you would prep for that. Um, feel free to let me know in the comments. I would definitely not mind doing that. And uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, once again, thank you so much for all the support. I incredibly appreciate it. It means a lot. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.